Clear skies overnight tonight, a low temperature of 30 degrees. And Valerie, it's looking good for the weekend, particularly considering it's November. I'm pretty thrilled about it because uh, Lord knows my California skin is still adapting to this weather. But <laughs> That's right. Well, it's good to have you here. We're looking for sunny. Maybe you brought the weather with us. Maybe. Maybe you brought my California sunshine. There you go. Not Could be. 48 degrees for the high Saturday. We'll have complete weather details coming up here on WVTT. And we also have an update on that tragic story from Texas. Four people were killed and 16 others injured when a train slammed into a float carrying veterans on their way to a banquet to be honored. The veterans were heading to a banquet to honor them when the train smashed into the float at full force Thursday afternoon. Now, some people managed to jump free, but for many, they simply did not have time. One of the most compelling images that emerged from Superstorm Sandy, newborns being evacuated from NYU Landjone Medical Center, hospital staff carrying infants down flights of stairs, all because of massive flooding. Now an extensive cleanup operation is underway. Elizabeth Cohen has our story. After the rain fell and the river overflowed into NYU Langone Medical Center, this is what was left. A hospital ruined by more than 10 million gallons of flood water. Now, two weeks later, Richard Cohen is my guide to see the damage. So we're in the cellar right now. We're in the cellar. We're at the lowest portion of the building. Down here, the filthy river water went up to the ceiling. It's been pumped out, but it still smells bad, so we have to wear masks. This was an MRI sweep. We have four MRIs down here. Unfortunately, they were all flooded. Oh, my God. How expensive is that machine? It's uh, probably several million dollars. And kaput. This is kaput. Right. The water continued rising up to the first floor. This lecture now, hall became a swimming cell. pool. So if we were standing here while this place was filling up, the water would come up to our it would, neck? It would almost cover your head and come up to my neck. I'd be underwater. Almost. Ken Langone, the medical center's chairman of the board, was there that night as a patient. I was on the 11th floor. How'd you get down? I walked. And you were recovering from pneumonia. They woke me up and said, we, we, we're evacuating. And I said, fine. So I got up and I got to brush my teeth, <laughs> put my clothes on. And I said, let's go. 322 patients were evacuated. Now this once busy emergency room is empty. This place took a hell of a hit. NYU Langone has brought in hundreds of cleanup workers, some with specialized skills from around the country. Hot air in these tubes is drying out the ceilings, floors, and walls. Cleanup is 24-7, expected to cost around $700 million. People's lives were saved in this room, yeah. and now it sits idle. How does that feel to you? Well, it feels like I can't wait for it to start saving lives again. Elizabeth Cohen, CNN, New York. Rockets and shells have been crisscrossing the skies between Israel and Gaza, leading to death and destruction. Martha Shade takes a look at the conflict and explains why the United States has a stake in what happens. Massive airstrikes on Gaza were reported early this morning, about 6 a.m. local time. Israel says more than 400 rockets were fired from Gaza since Wednesday, and it's being forced to protect its citizens with weapons of its own. The Israeli Defense Force says it has intercepted more than 100 projectiles as it targets what it claims are long- and mid-range launch sites in Gaza. The Navy is also aiming at targets along Gaza's shoreline. A rocket hit a city near Tel Aviv on Thursday, causing air sirens to go off for the first time since 1991. Prime Minister, Prime Minister of Israel has to go into a bomb shelter. Imagine if the President of the United States had to go into the bomb shelter. The U.S. is a key Israeli ally, and many on Capitol Hill say the country should defend itself, but they also want the violence to end. We are also concerned about any civilian deaths. We mourn those deaths, and we want uh, Hamas not to put people in harm's way. Both Israeli and Palestinian officials are reporting deaths, including children. These men at a pizza shop in Ashkelon, Israel, which is near the border, say they are always afraid for their kids, and they want the government to make it all stop. We don't want war, but there are people all the time shooting Israel. One, one time, one time, big boom, and after this, long time quiet. This Palestinian lawmaker says Israel is the oppressor, not the victim. 
Israel, this Israeli government is not a government of peace. It's a government of war, and their behavior is killing the very last opportunity of peace based on two-state solution. The Israeli defense minister says while there are multiple militant groups behind the rocket attacks, Israel holds Hamas responsible since it took control of Gaza. I'm Martha Shade reporting. Gaming giant Nintendo is set to release its most advanced gaming system yet. They're calling it Wii U. Now, the company has had six years of success with its original Wii system. Fans of the Wii are anxiously awaiting this weekend's release. CNN Money reporter Julianne Pepitone has more on the story. Launching November 18th, the Wii U is the first major console from Nintendo since the original Wii, which debuted six long years ago. The Wii U's big difference lies in its special wireless gamepad controller. The gamepad features a 6.2-inch touchscreen that works differently with each game, and it usually gives that player some special powers versus the players using regular Wii controllers. In one game, all the players with regular controllers try to catch the gamepad player without knowing where one another is. In a teamwork example, the gamepad player helps another regular player by stunning enemies and adding blocks for Mario to jump on. It's a clever way to make a classic single-player game like Mario more compelling for a second player. Multiplayer games were really fun on the Wii U, but I didn't think the gamepad added as much to single-player mode. One such game I tried was Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge. I loved playing it, but I felt like I was playing on a regular controller. The gamepad's touchscreen let me equip weapons and check my scores and projected that onto the television, so that could have been done just as easily with a regular controller. But that's not a knock on Ninja Gaiden itself. I felt that way about most of the single-player games I tried on the Wii U. Nintendo, of course, is invested in making the gamepad count and really make a difference. So it does that well with its own games like Super Mario Wii U. The Wii U also connects to the internet so you can do online gaming and you can also watch streaming online video from Netflix, Amazon and Hulu. With the Wii U, Nintendo stays true to its roots in fun gameplay with friends. That group fun makes the Wii U really appealing, but the single-player gaming with the gamepad isn't nearly as strong. In some ways, it feels very similar to playing with a regular controller. The price may also be a concern for some consumers. I was at the press conference when Nintendo announced the $300 and $350 price points, and people in the audience groaned as soon as they said them. You can understand why Nintendo priced at that level, because the gamepad is solid with the responsive touchscreen. But $300 is still a lot of money, especially with so many device options out there. iPhones and tablets are now part of the casual gaming market that makes up Nintendo's bread and butter, and those could make it harder for Nintendo to stay competitive in a world of app stores and $4.99 games. Overall, the Wii U is a great gaming experience with friends. While the price may seem a little high, I think it's worth it for what you get. But if you're more into single-player games, the Wii U may not be the console for you. And in WVTT business, taking a look at the closing numbers, an up day for the Dow. Whether it was because of that big rally on the Japanese Nikkei index, Nikkei closed up 2% yesterday. Whatever the reason, as you can see, the Dow ended up 46 points, closing at 12,588. Still to come on the 6 o'clock report, we have our WVTT community calendar and also complete weather details straight ahead as well. Stick around. This is the 6 o'clock report on News Channel 25 WVTT.